first heard about this game from an artist I'm following on Twitter, posting his fan art of the game. The title caught my attention, and I didn't really expect anything out of the game. More so that it was just most likely an anime game with a very cute aesthetic. Sometime later, I wishlisted the game and I didn't really plan on buying the game since release. But then one day I woke up and saw a notification. It was a Steam gift from a viewer signed, um, Milashka. And the gift was Needy Girl Overdose. Never really expecting receiving a gift, I probably got a feeling of something across the lines of YouTubers receiving fan mail for the first time. A rush of happiness and gratitude, but then a single emotion is permanent, except my crippling depression. What I really felt in this instance is an obligation to try it out, that I couldn't really wait to try it out, and also that this game was for sure gonna be something for me. Opening up the game I am greeting with a retro feel along with a very cutesy vibe. The setup is simple, the main protagonist, you, live with a YouTuber wannabe girl. Your mission is to help her gain more followers as, may, as well as maintaining her stress level. But after a closer look you start to see the red flags. Now the protagonist called Pichan is texting over line with Ame-chan and she wants to be a live streamer. Her persona, OMG Kawaii Angel, short for K-Angel, shows her personality in the polar opposite. Every action you make, she will share it on Twitter, now called X, one on her main KA Angel account and the other one on her private account. This is where affection comes into play. The more affection she has, the more she is willing to not only listen to you, but also love you. And she really shows that she loves you in form of these Twitter messages or X messages. You can even do some interesting stuff with her, but if you do it too much, and the affection goes too high, you will get an ending where she will give up everything just to be with you. This game has multiple endings and a lot of them are not exactly good in the terms of like happiness. They're not a happy ending. You can also see in the action bar that she will take supplements and if you actually decide to use this as time progresses, the supplements become stronger and stronger to manage her stress. Every number, stress, affection and mental darkness is supposed to be managed in the middle. Not too much, not too little. And in my first playthrough, I tried keeping the mental darkness as low as possible, leading into a normie ending, where she realizes that live streaming is not for her, and that she would rather live a boring day job life than pursuing her dream. The only number that you have to increase as much as possible is her followers. After a few days of playing in-game, you will get a message from your landlord saying you need to pay the bills. The only way for us to do that is to gain monetization, meaning 10k subscribers, or followers. By doing different actions you will gain video ideas and as you reach more subs those video ideas will start to be able to lead your heroine into different endings. For example the conspiracy theories ending where K Angel does so many conspiracy theory live streams that she herself starts believing that she is the god of the universe leading into quite bleak ending in the form of her last live stream. This is just an example of what is in the game and it surely blew me away how unexpectedly the direction of the story branched out. At the time of playing the game, I also wasn't in a good spot with my relationship with YouTube and who I wanted to become. Playing this game, it just felt so uneasy how I could actually relate to the story of chasing viewers and constantly having to figure out new content to upload. I actually thought the best ending for her was when she quit the internet to not have this kind of personality of being close to insanity and overstressed. What really made me think about that was the fact that I had to increase her mental darkness to keep progressing or she would just quit live streaming. It made me think that the strive for her own desires was actually just close to addiction, to something that seems to be what she wants all along, but to achieve it she has to break mentally. And we can get into very fun fan theories for instance that P-chan, short for producer Chan, aka you, that is controlling her, is actually just a part of her imagination, because just from the start from day 2 you can already choose to take medical supplements which could indicate that she clearly has a form of mental illness from the start and not developed over time during her livestream career. But it's all just a theory, a game theory. The game tackles heavy themes such as mental health and addiction which add a depth and complexity to not only the main character but also the gameplay interaction. For example, how you manage her stress levels by going out with her and spending time together. But the more famous you get, the more extreme are also the activities you have to do. If she has too little mental darkness, she will simply just not strive to be the very best and you will get an average ending. By doing very stressful activities and non-stop grinding for uh, viewer counts, her mental darkness will go up. 
This sort of game's portrayal of how pushing yourself to the limit can lead to unexpected and often detrimental outcomes highlights the similarities between the protagonist's journey and the dangers of addiction, where the pursuit of something that seems good can actually be unhealthy and self-destructive. One of the things I appreciated the most about the game was its art style. The retro, pixelated graphics gave the game a nostalgic feel, while the cute and colorful character designs made it visually appealing. It has a very not only cutesy vibe, but also that old school Windows look. It manages to be retro, but also modern in its design, because of exactly this uneasy feeling that you're actually managing these complex emotions of being a famous persona, but trying to have an everyday life as well. Overall, Needy Girl Overdose was a surprisingly engaging and thought-provoking game. While it may not be for everyone, I would definitely recommend it to anyone who enjoys visual novels or games with complex characters and teams. 